Hi, it's Paul from Sailing Kate Louise, and I'm off to meet somebody that's just bought a trailer sailor. Well, they didn't actually buy it recently. They bought it seven months ago, and Clive and his wife have been doing it up ever since. And the reason I'm going to see them? Well, it's a very special boat. It's an Investigator 563, which was the first trailer sailor I ever had about 15 years ago. Why did you pick the Investigator 563? Well, we looked at a whole range of different trailer sailors and they all varied in condition. Uh, some were supposed to be ready for sale and were really clearly not. And what we liked about the Investigator was the keel is all below, so you've got a lot more cabin space. It folds down out of the skeg keel, doesn't it? Yeah, so you've got the weight there. You've got a good ballast already in the boat, so you don't have to have the, the keel down all the time. Yeah. You can still sail it well. So as you can see, there's no centerboard case in the middle which means you've got a lot more leg room. Because with the compasses and the Hartleys, you do have quite a large centerboard case in the mm. cabin, which takes yeah. a lot of leg room up. So this has a lot of room, which is really good. I like the covering. What's the covering? It's a marine carpet, basically, which looks uh, like timber. We went with the grey because we thought it was a nice colour to go with the white. Yeah. But it's, it's basically just a, a thin carpet, which we've lined with non-slip material so that we can peel it up if we need to, but it gives it kind of an extra warmth, yeah. level of warmth and insulation, but we can take it up if we need to. What else have you done inside? It looks brand new. Well, we we pretty much done everything. It was beige to start with, which we didn't like, and um, there was paint, paint on it, peeling paint, and we just scraped and scraped and scraped, sanded down, sanded down the beige, and we, and we also trimmed and stripped the wood so that we could turn it from a um, honey-coloured wood tone to a darker walnut tone, which we think really goes nicely with the white, and so we really wanted it clean and slick inside as well. Pretty much every stainless steel bolt, we, I started off by scrubbing every single one of them <laughs> with solvent to get rid of the silicon for a start. There's a lot of silicon on the boat, and we yeah. got rid of every, every piece of silicon around, but also we wanted new stainless steel screws and especially inside where you can see the, the bolt heads, we wanted them to be shiny and clean, so we got new stainless steel screws. So with the electrics, they were all haphazard, there were wires everywhere, we wanted to get rid of all those and make it look clean and compact. My son's an electrician, which is always very handy, but we designed the panels ourselves to be fairly minimal, but also to have some key components. And those things are the switch panels, so we can switch on navigation lights, cabin lights, uh, USB chargers or 12 volt chargers for a fridge or anything else to charge up our phones. We wanted that there. We also wanted especially a battery meter. We've got a new marine battery, 12 volt battery, but we wanted a battery meter so that we know how much charge is being used at any one time. So we know what, how much we've got left, how much we're using and when we're going to run out so we know how to charge it. We also went for a, a small fixed solar panel. We didn't like the idea of having a large solar panel, even though they might be much more efficient in the long run we didn't want a large one that might be cumbersome around the yacht so we had a small solar panel that just trickle charges the battery constantly and then we bought a solar blanket so that when we put on board a fridge like a monkey. cross monkey fridge when we've got that on board and we need a freezer we've got a 120 watt solar blanket that will really look after that and take care of the fridge your wife has been very industrious with all the covers. Yes, yeah, she, she cut the foam shape even to the curve of the boat <laughs> and wow. then has made the cover, made to fit all the covers. Um, so she's responsible for a lot of the interior design as well as the painting. So up forward there's a, a double bunk, hides the porta potty. There will be a vanity curtain as well when it comes. There's actually a good amount of leg room all the way around that as well, so you've got a lot of space. Yeah. Now it's called a 563, it's 5.63 metres long, so it's not huge, but there does seem to be an awful lot of room in here. For similar boats that were probably even slightly larger, they, they had less room. They had less room inside, and they were also a little bit larger, so a bit more cumbersome in terms of putting on the trailer, Getting reversing. Yeah, yeah. And I can fit this under the carport, which is great for doing maintenance work. Yeah. We looked at the Carreel especially, but also some Sonatas and a Far 
Uh, and we even purchased an Adams 21, 21 feet long, but we just found it was too big for us and our purposes. So the one thing that's really good about an investigator is it doesn't have a compression post holding up the cabin roof. Yeah, we like the fact that if you have a post here, again, divides the boat, but also just prevents access. This has a, what we call a hobbit hole, um, frame so that all the weight is taken within this frame and so it, it divides the boat up quite neatly. None of the other trailer sailors have that. No, it's, it's quite a different. unique design for the investigator. Yep, any any bit of timber in the in the boat we sanded back, varnished and made it a darker wool nut which looks much yeah. nicer I think. How do you lower the pop top? So it has two locking slides either side. Using your head Um, it's not that heavy, it's just a little awkward. And then we went for two washboards instead of one. It's easier to fit. The old washboard was very large and cumbersome, and this is much easier to store. We thought it would be easier to get the, the pop top and the hatch on and off if we just had two pieces and it looks nice. We added a vent so that there's constant airflow through the boat so that we don't get any mold or yeah. residue. Clive and Jenny also spent time replacing the Perspex windows. They didn't want screws so they used a new double-sided tape product called VHB. Self-draining cockpit obviously. Yep done the steps up as well. Just with polish, we found a great uh, product called Barkeeper's Friend, which is very useful for polishing stainless steels. So we've yeah. just made everything look shiny and clean, and then a bit of an oil on the, the, the grey plastic just to make them last a little bit longer. So Clive, tell me, how long have you sailed all up, do you reckon? Well, I started um, learning in primary school back in England, and then my parents had a, or well, my father had a, an enterprise oh, dinghy. Yeah. So we, we enjoyed sailing dinghies. I did some dinghy instructing on lakes in Wales. But it's only when I started teaching that one of the teachers had a 27 foot yacht. And I went out just off Brighton on the south coast of England and just thoroughly enjoyed it. And I thought I could, I could do this. I ended up um, later that year with a job in the Caribbean, oh. um, sailing around on a yacht, cruising around the Caribbean. And I thought, this is fantastic. So that really got me hooked on yachts. Yeah. yeah. And why did you pick a trailer sailor as, well, opposed to a, as opposed to a keel boat? We looked at a couple of keel boats, but we thought the biggest problem was that they're in a permanent location, and it might be a nice location, but it would limit us to where we could go. We want to be able to sail in different places. We love Port Stevens, we love Lake Macquarie, we love Pittwater, and with one a keel yacht, we're going to be limited because my wife's not really keen on coastal sailing. Of course, you can sail with other people, as in Raid Sydney, which is always a lot yeah. of fun. And so having watched the videos, we're really keen to participate and get involved and sail with a group of other people as well. Yeah. So, yeah. The other thing is we thought, well, if we've got any maintenance to do, and there would probably be a, be a lot because they're not cheap yeah. things to have, that we wouldn't be able to easily access it um, nor work on it. So what we did in the end, we, we bought a project. We, we knew it would be a project. I did anticipate it might take six weeks. It's actually taken seven months, but <laughs> I think uh, that's because we've actually wanted to do the project properly. Yeah. And I have to credit my wife, Jenny, for that because she wanted a, a yacht that if she's going to sit on and sail on, she wants one that looks nice as well as performs well. So we spent a lot of time doing everything, sanding everything down. We found out that to get rid of all the fine hairline cracks, they're not structural cracks, they're just cracks in, in fiberglass that appear over time. If you don't want them to show through, you've got to dremel them out, fill them with resin, then sand them back. And I'm pretty sure we did about a thousand of those. Oh, but goodness. when you look at the paintwork now, you can see that it looks really, really nice. It's come up really well. It just took a lot of work in the preparation. We would, If we'd rushed it, we would have been sorry that we did. Yeah. How how old is your boat? I believe it's a 1980, so about 40 years old. So. Do, you, do you know the sail number at all? I think it's 144. Right. They were built between the 70s and 80s. And I yeah. think the last one was about 1989, I think was the last yeah, one. Yeah, so this is early 80s. Now tell me about your trailer guide. Well, I haven't seen that before on the trailer. The guides will allow the keel or the skeg to just move into the right place so that yeah. you're hitting the centre of the trailer and the boat's not drifting onto one side or the other and the keel will sit on the rollers nicely. Yeah, because that can be an issue if the wind's in the wrong direction. Yeah, so and we haven't tested it out yet, but we're, <laughs> we're pretty sure it'll work.
Clive, I know it's a rude question, but um, how much did you pay for the boat? We paid about $4,000 for the boat itself, but it was a project and we knew that at the time. We probably spent at least another 7000 on top of that, but that included getting the trailer restored, but on all the paints and all the fittings and everything else that we need. But we think it's about 11000 all up, but it's a very nice looking boat. Yeah, absolutely. When Clive's not restoring boats, he's writing books. I'll put a link to his latest one below. So Clive, after seven months, this is your first sale? Seven months, probably, probably near eight months, I think, yes. Exciting. We're ready, we've got the mast up, we've tested the rigging, it all seems to be working. So we're looking forward to getting on the water. Yep. Well, I've only got one caveat today, and that is I have to get home in time for the Matildas. Yeah. <laughs> Five o'clock. We will laugh. <laughs> because uh, my wife suddenly discovered soccer. So this is Clive's six horsepower Tahatsu he bought second hand for about 800 bucks. Four stroke. So Jenny, you've got some very fancy fenders there. What, what, what's going on? Um, I saw it on a YouTube clip and it's just a pair of old um, leggings cut. Uh Oh, yeah. And sewn up, so they're easy to pull on and off. Yeah, very fancy. Covers it up. Clive and Jenny's boat looks very nice on the water. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of wind. It's meant to be five knots, but it doesn't look like five knots to me. Um, so we're just enjoying a nice sunny day, basically. Clive and Jenny have named their boat Inna Masalo. It's the first two letters of the names of their five grandkids. Eventually the wind did pick up to about two or three knots. I had a date with the Matildas, so I headed back. I hope you enjoyed watching Clive and Jenny's first sail on the Investigator 563, which they spent seven months doing up. There wasn't a lot of wind today, I'll be honest, but they were very keen to get it on the water. Anyway, thank you for watching Sailing Kate Louise, and I'll see you on the water somewhere next time. In fact, it'll be Mile Lakes in a couple of weeks. So, so far, I think we've got 15 boats coming. So keep an eye out for that one. See you then. <laughs>